A new culprit is emerging in the measles outbreak, large tech companies. Critics say social media platforms help to spread false information. Several states are suing the president. Leaders say his emergency declaration is unconstitutional. It felt like a huge responsibility, and it, I felt a bit presumptuous to assume that I could be a voice for a community. A Spokane woman is celebrating a milestone as a voice for the black community here in Spokane. We are telling you the story of the Black Lens newspaper and the woman behind it. 5 a.m. on our Tuesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. And I'm Brittany Bailey. We actually are tracking one school delay this morning. The Reardon Edwell School District will be on a two hour delay. That's the only one we have today. Of course, that could change tomorrow morning, it <laughs> sounds like. Just one day break, basically. And now, well, more of that SNOW is on the way. We'll send things over to Evan Arani now. Let him deliver the bad news for you. Is that the point we've gotten to or we can't even say what I the can't word is say out loud? No. You know, I'm not ready. I'm ready for spring. Evan. I know. We are, our assistant news director had written on her board yesterday, stop the snow. And I said, I feel like I'm being targeted by this <laughs> statement. <laughs> but uh, outside, uh, we are starting off our day actually pretty calm. We've got uh, partly cloudy skies, just as we did yesterday morning. Unfortunately, of course, snow is returning uh, as of this afternoon and evening. What we do see this morning is uh, another round of those single digit and teen temperatures. We made our way down to nine degrees just a couple hours ago. We are now at 12 degrees. We will probably continue in this 12 degree range or even cool down by another degree or two into the uh, next couple hours. Uh, the big story though, your weather story of the day is going to be how your chances of snow increase throughout the day. So the best chance for uh, the widespread snow showers to make their way through the northwest is going to be between about 3 and 5 p.m. You can see our chances jump from 60 to 70 percent in that time frame. Uh, that means that if you have plans for this morning, if you're going to go out on a morning run, if you're going to be uh, dropping the kids off at school, you should be good to go to start off the day. Aside from those cold temperatures, we're not looking at any chances of precipitation. We're going to be staying dry. Those clouds are going to be increasing as we get towards the afternoon. Still temperatures barely hidden that 20 degree mark. And then into your evening around 5 p.m. We start to see moderate snow develop. Chances are that by the time we get to tomorrow morning, we could continue to see the snow and maybe even be seeing heavier snowfall into your Wednesday. So Wednesday looks to be uh, one of those days where we're going to be seeing snow for the majority of the day, as opposed to today where we start off pretty dry and then we'll start to see it develop into the evening hours. Again, temperatures all around the Northwest continue about 15 degrees below average. We're in the mid 20s, whereas average would be 40 degrees for this time of year. Uh, so that is not helping with, uh, of course, the snow that we're seeing. And uh, we're, we're looking to stay in that range for the remainder of your week and maybe well into next week, which includes uh, more snow on the way. So for now, I'll throw things over at 502 to Amber Rusperson to give us a check of what the roads look like. Hi, Amber. Good morning. Well, we're taking a look outside and we can see clear conditions across the board. It's still pretty early right now at 503. So if you are going to start your morning commute, you shouldn't run into any delays or congestion, but I will keep an eye out in case uh, things do start to form. That's all I have for now. So I will go ahead and send it back to the studio. Amber, thank you. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is weighing in on the measles outbreak. He says cases are leveling off now. But he also supports pending legislation to remove personal exemptions on the MMR vaccine. This morning, there are 62 confirmed cases of the measles in Washington state, and state health authorities have identified two more locations where people have been exposed. Both are schools in Vancouver, Washington. Health experts are urging anyone who is not vaccinated and may have been exposed to call a doctor before heading to a clinic. Tech giants are now being blamed for their role in spreading false information about measles. Of the confirmed cases, almost 90% of the patients were not immunized. Last week, a representative from California sent a letter to Google and Facebook asking how the companies manage posts that spread anti-vaccination messages. Google, which owns YouTube, is working on linking certain health topics to third-party sources. Facebook leaders say they have taken steps to reduce health-related misinformation. But there still is a lot more to do, and many question why the false messages are spreading so quickly. The editor-in-chief of Wired says it is because feelings tend to spread more quickly than facts. That is absolutely, that is the core of this problem. Social networks are based on emotion. 
So content that makes us feel emotional, whether it's fear, whether it's uncertainty, mm -hmm. that spreads really quickly. So as they say, a lie gets halfway around the world before truth can get its boots on. Medical experts say people can be trained to analyze what is true and what is false. You can do that by looking at the author, seeing where the information was published, and checking those who benefit. You can also determine whether information was based on one study or multiple. The preliminary hearing for the man accused of killing a missing Colorado mother is set to begin this morning. Patrick Frazee is charged with two counts of first degree murder in the death of his fiance, Kelsey Barrett. This morning, prosecutors are expected to lay out why they believe Frazee was responsible for Barrett's death. Barrett was last seen on Thanksgiving Day. Her body has not been found, but authorities believe she is no longer alive. Barrett's parents believe she was killed because of a custody battle for the couple's one-year-old daughter. An Idaho nurse pleaded guilty to tampering with Barrett's cell phone. As part of her plea deal, she agreed to testify at Frazee's trial. A 16 states filed a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of President Trump's national emergency declaration. The declaration allows federal money allocated for the Defense Department to be diverted to fund the border wall. Across the country, dozens of rallies were held yesterday to pr protest the declaration. So far, Washington and Idaho are not on the states challenging the president. But Governor Jay Inslee says he and the state attorney general will act quickly if they find any harm to the people of Washington. California is one of the 16 states. The state's attorney general is alleging the president is violating the Constitution. The president is overreaching. He's going beyond his executive powers, and he's doing this knowing full well that there is no emergency crisis uh, at the border. The White House maintains there is a humanitarian and security crisis. Last week, the president said he expected a lawsuit, and he vowed to take the fight to the Supreme Court. 506 now, February is Black History Month, and a Spokane woman is celebrating more than just the strides of other black Americans, but also a milestone of her own. Krim 2's Kira O'Fallon is live in our newsroom this morning to tell us about the Black Lens newspaper and its start in Spokane. Good morning, Kiera. Yes, good morning. Well, Sandy Williams is a one-woman operation as she has played a very crucial role in the Black community in Spokane for the past four years. Readers say her newspaper is one of the reasons Spokane is steadily becoming a more inclusive community. such a different perspective than any of the other newspapers. Through the lens of a black woman living in Spokane, Sandy Williams runs a newspaper out of the basement in her home. She is her own news staff, even teaching herself to lay out and design a newspaper. Taught as in I've made it so that I can figure out how to put it together. Williams refers to this part of the newspaper process as her time underground, getting ready for the next issue of the black lens. I place the columns and the ads first. The last thing that I do is the stuff that I have to write myself. At first, the paper was more of a part-time hobby. That quickly changed. I took a leap in the middle of 2015 and I quit my job. A leap that a very small minority would come to appreciate. When I started out, my idea was that I was gonna do just happy stories about people in Spokane uh, because a lot of the news that focuses on the African-American community is negative. That lasted about five minutes um, because I, d I ended up needing to cover stories that weren't getting covered in other places. story printed on the front page of the very first issue of the Black Lens. Williams could not ignore the release of a Department of Justice review of excessive force used by the Spokane Police Department. This report surfacing eight years after the death of a white man beaten at the hands of a Spokane police officer. But what stood out to her in that report was a section on race, stating that there were no racial disparities in SPD's use of excessive force. So I read the report 
Um, that wasn't exactly accurate because the population, African American population is 2%, racial disparities were 10%, so it's disparate. Um, and, I, and I thought, well, if I don't say that, then it won't get out there. So that became the first story. And so in that moment, it was like one of those moments where in that moment, the paper took a turn from sort of being this sort of casual kind of let me tell happy stories to I think there's a role for me to tell stories that aren't getting told. Good, are you here for the black list? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yay, thank you for coming. I did not imagine that I would be doing this after one year. Later, and Williams has gained a community of readers happy to celebrate the four-year anniversary of the newspaper she nurtured into a conversation bringing many together. When there's a small population, it's hard to connect with each other, it's hard to find each other, it's hard to know what's going on. Communities feel um, comfortable and feel empowered when they have an ability to communicate and connect with each other. A power producing great force as a crowd of supporters fill a restaurant to standing room only. You do a great job. Thank you very much. Just someone else's story. I can't live that story so I get to hear what other people think. I just think it's important for us to have a voice and I think that Black Lens is a newspaper that lets us have a voice. The anniversary party is over but there is still work to be done for the February issue of the Black Lens. Yeah, these are, these are slipperier. <laughs> that is if you call stuffing papers in good company <laughs> work. I think we have a good time. I never knew that she was going to grow up and be like this, you know? Curtis <laughs> made the mistake of telling me that he was retired and he didn't have anything to do, so. <laughs> so he and Pam do this with Williams and her mom every single month. Do you get paid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. With Look. kindness. Yeah. <laughs> Give her lots of hugs. Oh. When I first started stuffing the paper, it was me and my mom, but there were probably, what, about 20 of them, I think. Now she has help. I take full advantage of the fact that Curtis and Pam are free <laughs> and make themselves available to come over here and help out. <laughs> Now comes the hard part. Each month, William sets out to deliver her papers, her voice to the community. When I printed the first issue, I sat in the car. I had all the papers in my on my back seat, and I sat in the car, and I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I called my daughter, uh, and I'm sitting in the car on the phone with my daughter. I said, I have all these newspapers on my back seat. What do I do now? And she said, hand them out. <laughs> It felt like a huge responsibility and it, I felt a bit presumptuous to assume that I could be a voice for a, a community. Hey, hey that's Sandy <laughs> from Black Land. How you doing, sweetie? I'm good. How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I've been here for 40 some years and I've never uh, seen a a black-owned newspaper like this one here. It gives a lot of information to the black black uh, citizen of the country and the black residents of Spokane. When I bring the papers, you know, like people get really excited. That's really fun for me. I love when I when someone approaches me and says, hey, you know, I read something or I saw something. I, I never knew that. Sandy, I never knew that. The other side, there's been a little bit of pushback. Um, there have been voices that have said it's exclusionary, um, divisive, because I focus on the black community, that, that somehow that's read by some people as is um, trying to be separatist. Don't really understand that, but that's a voice that's out there. It doesn't come up very often, but it does come up. It's not an easy task, producing this paper each month. How do I do it? You know, I don't know. Every month I'm ready to quit. But then she remembers all of the people who have become involved as readers and contributors. To be an African-American-based newspaper in a, in a community that has 2% 
African American people. I'm sort of a dreamer that way. Communities feel um, comfortable and feel empowered when they have an ability to communicate and connect with each other. That's part of the role that I'm playing is giving folks an opportunity to, in a safe way, to learn, to experience and just see an alternate perspective that they probably wouldn't know about or see if they weren't if the paper didn't exist. Williams delivers her newspaper to several businesses in the community, so many of you have probably seen it around town. If you're interested in becoming a subscriber, we will have a link up on our website soon at crim.com. I'm live here in the newsroom, Kira L. Fallen, Crim 2 News. All right, Kira, thank you so much for sharing that story with us this morning. 515 now on this Tuesday. Well, did you catch it early this morning? We will share with you some views of the snow moon. And speaking of snow, that's on the way. We're talking about just how much to expect, and it looks like the heaviest accumulations could be in a spot of the Northwest that hasn't seen much of that snow so far this year. We're talking about that after the break.